Welcome back to Exercise Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the variation of fuel selection with exercise intensity. So, in other words, as we change the intensity of the exercise that we're performing, how does that change where the skeletal muscle is going to get its fuel source? Is it going to be uh, mostly carbohydrate? Is it going to be mostly fat? And actually, as you change the exercise intensity, we're actually going to see a shift in the percent contribution of the fuel source. The first thing I want to discuss is this graph over here on the right side of the screen. Now, this actually nicely displays two things. Now, the first thing I want to mention is the absolute energy expenditure. Re this is just really talking about, at a given exercise intensity, how much overall energy do you need to perform that work? And I don't think it's really that difficult to understand. As we go up in intensity, we're going to need more and more energy, irrespective of where the energy is coming from. And the absolute energy expenditure is really just indicated by the height of the overall bar. Obviously, at rest, the absolute energy expenditure is going to be the lowest. And as we go up in exercise intensity, here we have 75% of VO2 max, we have the highest absolute energy expenditure. Now, that energy is going to be coming from multiple sources, uh, but regardless of that, it's the highest. And if we were to extend this up to 100% of VO2 max, the bar would be up somewhere by the title. But now what we want to talk about is the relative energy expenditure, or we could say the percent contribution of each of these fuel sources to exercise at a given intensity. And we have four mainly four sources for this energy. We have muscle glycogen in black, plasma glucose in white, in this light gray, plasma-free fatty acids, and then in darker gray, other fat sources. Okay. Now notice at rest, um, it's about a 50-50 split more or less. Um, it's a little bit different than that, but we have some contribution from plasma glucose and then some from plasma-free fatty acids. You should also notice at rest, we really don't have any contribution from muscle glycogen or this other fat sources. It's really just going to come from free fatty acids in the blood and also blood glucose. Um, but as we go up and start exercising, so we go up to 40% VO2 max, now we're going to have some contribution from all four of these energy sources. So while we're still going to have plasma glucose playing a role and free fatty acids, we're also going to have a contribution from those other fat sources and muscle glycogen. Now one thing you should notice is, even though we have this sort of a constant increase in the absolute energy expenditure with increasing intensity, notice that the percent contribution is changing um, in a different way. If you look really carefully, you'll notice that if we just look at the carbohydrates overall, so plasma glucose and muscle glycogen, if we kind of combine them, that's the black and the white, at 40% VO2 max, which is a relatively low intensity of exercise, we actually have a majority of contribution from fat and a little bit less of carbohydrate because the area occupied by the black and the white is a little bit less. And as we go up in exercise intensity, what we're going to see is that there's going to be more of a contribution of the carbohydrate and less of the fat. This is much more easily visualized at 75% VO2 max. If we look at the area of this bar, occupied by the black and the white, which is the muscle glycogen and plasma glucose respectively, it's well over 50% of the area of this bar. So that tells us as we're increasing exercise intensity, as we get up to say 75% of our VO2 max, the majority percentage wise of that energy is coming from carbohydrate. Down here at the bottom, that's from the lipid or fat. And so a much smaller percentage is actually coming from the fat. And this actually displays two important things. The lesser of the two is really that, remember, as you go up in intensity of exercise, the absolute energy expenditure always increases. So if we go up to 85, 90, 100 percent, these bars would keep getting higher and higher. But the really important thing for this video is that as you go up in exercise intensity, the percent contribution of carbohydrate to the exercise increases and the percent contribution of fat to the exercise decreases. So if we were actually to go up to 100% VO2 max, we would still have some contribution from fat, but it would be overall relatively small. Overall, 
the percent contribution from carbohydrate is going to be much larger. And this relative contribution of carbohydrate and fat to a given exercise intensity is really displayed nicely by this graph over on the left, which is very common to see in exercise physiology textbooks. So on the vertical axis, we have the percent energy from fat and carbohydrates from 0 to 100 percent. On the uh, horizontal axis, we have the exercise intensity displayed as percent VO2 max, 0 to 100. And what we see is at a low exercise intensity over here at like 10% of VO2 max, which is more or less rest, we have a pretty low percentage contribution from carbohydrate and relatively speaking, a much higher percent contribution from fat. But notice as we move along the x-axis or the intensity axis from left to right, we see that the percent contribution of fat uh, decreases, 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 and then the percent contribution of carbohydrate increases, increases more and more and more. And one of the reasons for this, this is not the only reason, but it's actually for a cell, like a skeletal muscle cell, it's much easier and more efficient to metabolize carbohydrates. Um, fat can be metabolized, and it's certainly a, a good energy source, but when you need a lot of energy really fast, you want the most efficient energy source possible. So when you're operating at, let's say, 80% of your VO2 max, that's a lot of energy that your muscles need very quickly. A lot of energy. And so your cells, or skeletal muscle cells, are going to rely more on carbohydrate because it's much easier to metabolize the carbohydrate. Because really what you're going to need is glycolysis and, uh, to some extent, the, the TCA cycle and so on and so forth. Fat's going to require beta oxidation, and there's a very complicated... Uh, transport mechanism for getting fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix, which is where beta oxidation occurs. And so overall, what you need to know right now is that carbohydrate is much more efficient to metabolize than fat is. And so when you're operating at these very high exercise intensities where you need a lot of energy very quickly, your, your muscle cells are going to say, I want the most efficient method possible and I'm going to rely on carbohydrates. In contrast, when you're operating at 10, 20% of your VO2 max, which is a very low intensity, your muscle cells can more or less live without that uh, efficiency. So they're going to they're gonna rely more on fat at these lower intensities, okay, and a lot less on carbohydrate, okay? So this is a very important figure that's often asked uh, in some form or fashion on exams and so forth. Low intensity during steady state exercise you're going to rely much more on fat and less on carbohydrate, but as you go and increase your exercise intensity, the reliance on carbohydrate is going to increase, and the reliance percent-wise on fat is going to decrease. Okay, Just remember, though, the absolute energy expenditure always increases with uh, increasing exercise intensity. So if we really had to sum up this video be by this stuff at the bottom. So when you're at a rest or low intensity of exercise, let's say 10, 20% of VO2 max, you're going to be metabolizing mostly lipid percentage wise. Okay. Now it doesn't mean you're not metabolizing carbohydrate. Look at this, 40% of VO2 max, we're still metabolizing some carbohydrate. It's just mostly lipid. Okay. But as we go up to a moderate intensity, so maybe 40%, uh, 50% of VO2 max, even up to 60%, our carbohydrate percent reliance is going to be increasing, whereas the reliance on lipid percentage-wise is going to be decreasing. And you can see this is a much more intense exercise than what we see over here on the left. Then if we go up to high intensity, so 80, 90, 100%, and even supramaximal, there's actually an ability for a very short amount of time to go above 100%, believe it or not. Um, at that point, you're going to be metabolizing by far mostly carbohydrates percentage-wise and very little, if any, uh, fatty acids. Okay, So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how fuel selection changes when you change exercise intensity. In the next video, we're actually going to look at a similar concept, but it actually has a sort of an opposite result. It's the variation of fuel selection with exercise duration. So join us in that video. Hopefully you learned something in this video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.